Joining me now are Gemma Tonyini and Caroline De Russo. Great to have you Hello, guys uh, on board again. I want to talk about this uh, growing trend of uh, youth crime being fuelled by TikTok and other social media. The, the way it works, Caro, I understand, is obviously that the, these people want to make heroes of themselves by filming their, their crimes, maybe committing the crimes so they have something to post on social media. It's a real problem. How do you think we can get on top of it? It's a huge problem, but equally, uh, I would like to thank them for doing our police a service and providing them with first-hand evidence that they need to charge and convict them. So I guess we at least, you know, the silver lining is we are circumventing some of that process. This is absolutely unbelievable. So the first question I ask myself is obviously, where are these people's par these kids' parents? Why aren't they at home? How, how do they think that this is acceptable? And that there is obviously a broader issue. Uh, the second issue is obviously those social media platforms, they have community guidelines against this sort of thing. So I actually don't know how this sort of thing is played and allowed up and left up because, Chris, God forbid you flash a nipple on Instagram, <laughs> uh, your whole world comes crashing down. But if you commit a crime, film it and post it, apparently that seems to get passed, which I have a huge amount of difficulty with. Yeah. Um, look, I understand that there are talks, including with the communications minister, you know, to do to try and uh, bring in some legislation to deal with this. But we're trying to put a Band-Aid over a bullet wound. We're trying to deal with a symptom and not deal with the, the overarching condition, which this here is, this here is a, a symptom of total social dysfunction. There, uh, there's a Seinfeld episode for everything. Of course, there was the one where Elaine uh, showed her nipple on the uh, Christmas card. <laughs> uh, you're so right there, though, Caro. Um, this is the point. I heard, um, I heard Luke Grant on Radio 2GB just uh, in the past couple of days make the very excellent point, Gemma, that he could take one minute to find some appalling tweets off X or Twitter, yeah. read them on air, and he would lose his job yeah. the next day for broadcasting such yeah. filth. Yet the social media platforms continue to host this stuff. And that's the, all right, so they're filming stuff, maybe it's great evidence to convict them, but why are the platforms allowing it to be posted? Well, it's the disconnect, right? So this show and Luke's show are governed by things like G-code, things that you and I would know about. We can't show certain things at certain times because tender young eyes might be watching or listening. And these social media platforms have been allowed to germinate and sprout almost unchallenged and unchecked. It's kind of like this retrofitting a set of guidelines and values because they're not that... And this comes so to the question... So they're ungoverned, uh, yeah, but they make all the money but, but this is the out thing. of it, but They've been not protesting forever. That, oh, we're not publishers. Well, they have to be treated as right? publishers, Right, because surely. the reason yeah. that they don't want to be treated as publishers, apart from the obvious, is because it means that they are not... Uh, so, uh, they're not governed by the same set of standards. If they're publishers, then they're accountable. The government has the solution here. Class them all as publishers and then see what happens. Yeah, it's all over. Then, then they have to lift their game. They actually have to control what goes on their platform. Just a, a, an addendum to this issue of youth crime. Uh, uh, there are meetings away in the Northern Territory today. I understand, Caroline, about uh, whether or not that youth curfew in Alice Springs is going to be extended. The Northern Territory Police Commissioner talking to the government about that. It seems likely, doesn't it, that they, they need to extend that before they can put some permanent measures in place? Yeah, and, and it's probably not a bad idea, Chris. And, look, when these things are put in place to give locals respite, it really makes you wonder or makes you consider how bad the ordinary situation is for locals in these sorts of towns. And, yes, it probably does need to be extended for the time being, but remember, Chris, this is also not solving a problem. This is just suppressing a problem. Yeah. And it goes back to essentially my last comment, which is Band-Aid on a bullet wound. This is a symptom of something else. This is a symptom of a broader societal issue that needs to be dealt with properly and uh, head on. Otherwise, we're going to continue to be putting in place these kind of ad hoc um, type measures to try and give locals respite. Well, no, locals should be able to be safe in their own homes. They should be able to drive in the street and walk in the street without fear of their lives. So, yes, it's good for the time being to be able to get those other measures in place. But look, those other measures, they have to happen. Yeah, they've got to get to the root causes here and a permanent solution. I want to uh, go to another issue that's kind of related to law and order, Gemma. First up, though, I want to show you a little clip. Here's, 
It's, it's a sad situation, really. A 21-year-old girl, I think she's now a 21-year-old woman, arrested. They just keep arresting this woman. Have a look. Greta Thunberg arrested again, this time in the Netherlands. Who cares? This seems to Don't be her care. job. She's making millions out of going around being arrested places. Like, she's... I mean, it's very sad, actually. Like, it there's is. no meaningful... There's no meaning to, to a life like that. And someone might go, oh, you know, how, how, who are you to judge? Well, I, I tell you what I am to judge. This is a person that the world venerated for being an ill-informed, utilised... And I use that word deliberately. She, this kid was utilised to push a particular agenda. She was venerated. She was positioned as a, an expert on subject matters well beyond her years and understanding. And you had people, like, it, it is just an insanity. So what else is she going to do? That kid's not going to go off to university and study and broaden her mind. She's not going to go off and do aid work or do anything that, here we go, nothing that actually involves an actual cost. No. There's no, no cost to that. No. Well, There's no fact, cost to rocking up, chaining yourself to something, sitting down, being dragged off and being... She's being applauded. Well, and and she gets for what? It. She gets environmental prizes, cash prizes. She's made a lot of money. And that of undermines the, uh, the, 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 the legitimate conversations that we need to be having on serious issues. Yeah. It's related a, to the environment. It's a yeah. scam.